G'day again. Question 16. The probability of winning a game is 7 on 10. Which expression represents the probability of winning two consecutive games? So we want to win this game, and then we want to win another of the same game. So the probability doesn't change in the game. It's sort of like rolling a dice. It's always 1 on 6. Okay, so this game doesn't change. So I want to win the first game. I've got 7 on 10. And I want to win the second game. It's 7 on 10. And in probability is multiplication. So I want this one multiplied by this one, which is quite easy. It's D. Question 17. What amount must be invested now at 4% per annum compounded quarterly so that in five years it will have grown to $60,000? Now, this question should actually say to the nearest dollar, but you're assuming that what they mean is the closest, the closest answer because there's actually two answers that grow to around about 60,000, but you want it as close as possible. Okay, so they want the best answer. So very simply, using the compound interest formula, you want some amount to be invested, multiplied by an interest rate. Now you want to increase it by 4% compounded quarterly. So 4% in a whole year is 1% in a quarter. So you want to increase it by 1.01%. All right, that's what you want to increase it by. And you want to go for five years. So normally you'd put a five up here, but we're doing it every quarter. So instead of five, you're doing five times four, which is 20. So this one's been four divided by four, and this one's multiplied by four. So you're really doing five, P multiplied by 1.01 to the power of 20. And that's going to equal $60,000. So all you do is a simple division. This is P equals this, is this divided by this. So you're going to get P equals 60,000 divided by 1.01 to the 20. And that will give you pretty close to that number. Okay? So it actually gives you 49172.668. Now I've already done it before, I didn't just do that in my head. Okay, so, and that's pretty close to that number if you round that up, which is the number they're looking for. Here's a quicker way. If you forget everything, you still have to remember your formula. So you're going to, because the answer is actually here, you know one of these must be the answer, so you can actually just use your calculator quicker to do it with this number. So you know that you've got some number, a principal, multiplied by an interest rate of 1.01, to the 20. Well, one of these must be the answer. So if you just put them in one at a time, you get to here, and when you put in 49173 1.01 to the 20, you press that in your calculator, you get 60,040 cents, which is the closest answer. This one gives you above 60,000 as well. So none of them give exactly 60,000, but to the nearest dollar, that's your best answer. So that's another way, possibly quicker. G'day again. Question 18. Now when you're getting this far into the paper, the questions start getting a little bit higher level, which this one is. Student representative council consists of five members. Three of the members are being selected to attend a conference. In how many ways can the three members be selected? So this question is a little misleading. In how many ways can I select three members. Well, I want to pick, I've got three spots to fill and I've got five people to choose from, A, B, C, D and E. So I want to put these people into these boxes. How many choices have I got for the first box? Well, five of them. Pick one, that'll do. How many choices have I got for the second box? Four. How many choices have I got for the third box? Three. So really, I could have picked them in 60 different ways, but let's say I chose John, Leanne, and Mark. So I chose those three, and I picked John first, then Leanne, then Mark, and I send them away in the conference. Well, what's the difference if I'd have picked Leanne first? then Mark, then John. Nothing, because I still end up with the same three people. So once you've got the three, it doesn't matter which order you've picked them in. 
So in that case, you should divide by 3 times 2 times 1, because I could pick each of these to fill these gaps in 3, then 2, then 1 way. So you're really dividing 60 by 6, or if you learned it another way, 3 factorial, because that's the number of ways you can change around John, Leanne and Mark. So you could have John, Leanne, Mark, or you could have La we'll do it another way, John, Mark, Leanne, or Mark, John, Leanne, or Mark, Leanne, John, or Leanne, Mark, John, Leanne, John, Mark. So you could have had them in each of those ways, and there are six different ways I could have had the same people. So that divided by six, so three factorial is six, gives me ten. Back again, question 19. The table shows the life expectancy for females at selected ages, and it gives you this table. In 1975, a 45-year-old female calculated the age to which she was expected to live. 20 years later, she recalculated the age to which she was expected to live. What is the difference between the two ages she calculated? So when you first look at the question on the paper, there's quite a lot of it, so you may think, oh, this is quite difficult. It's not really, but it does present as a, as a challenging question because there's a lot of information there, not, not a small uh, two-line question. So it's actually reasonably simple if you just read the question carefully. So we're looking, 1975, she calculates her age. So 1975, she's 45, she calculates her age. So she would be expected to live 34 more years. So you've got to add 45 plus 34 and get 79. So that's your first step. Then she does it again 20 years later. So 10, 20 years later. And now she's not 45, she's now 65. So you've got to look at that number. So now she's 65, she's expected to live this much longer. So again, you've got to do another addition. 65 plus 19.8 equals 84.8. So you've got these two differences. And you want to know what is the difference between this and this. And you're going to go that number, take away that number. So 84.8 minus 79 equals 5.8, which is D. So it's quite simple maths. The trick is in reading this diagram or this table and realising she's here to get this number and then 20 years later, which is down here and also across here, you want that number. So a little bit confusing, possibly a bit more difficult, but not very difficult maths to actually figure out what the problem is. Question 20. A machine produces cylindrical pipes. The mean of the diameters of the pipes is 8 centimetres and the standard deviation is 0.04. Assuming a normal distribution, what percentage will be less than 7.96? Okay, that's what we're looking at. So when you get a question and it mentions mean and standard deviation, you should be thinking in terms of what I call a butterfly diagram. So here's your mean which has got a z-score of zero, and then every time you go out in your little butterfly outlets, you're going out 0.04. So if I go positive, I'm going to 8.04. If I go again, I'm going to 8.08. .08. So that's a z-score of two, z-score of one. You can go out another one, but I won't fit it on this diagram. And minus one, minus two, and we take it off. We're going to take off 0 0.04, 0 0.04, etc. And we get 7.96, and that's our target number. We want that number right there. What percentage will be less than that? Now, on here, which is why I've got this this time, it's got a normal distribution, which is just there. Okay? And that gives you the three numbers you need. But you only need one of them for this one. The percentages are 68%, and then it keeps going. That's 95% up to 2 and then 99.7 for that one. Now for this question, we don't need this. We only need that number. We want to know how many are less than that. 
how many are less than this number? But you've got this 68% stuck in the middle. So it's actually quite simple if you go, okay, there it is. I've got 50% on this side, and I've got 50% on that side. 50-50, yeah? So how much is half of 68? Well, here there must be 34%, and here there must be 34%. So here I've got 50% take away 34%. So that is how I do my answer. 50 minus 34 is 16. 